So, I made a little bit of progress on this build. I actually set the neck in off camera. It was way too stressful to film. Believe it or not, this is only the first set neck that I've ever built. I actually tried one out uh, one of my last videos. It was the build two guitars for one piece of wood video, but I used epoxy and it was just a bolt-on neck in a bolt-on pocket. This is a real set neck with wood glue and I've never done anything like this before. It came out really great. There you can see all oh, those really pretty curves and carves and the really beautiful walnut neck. It's all set in nicely. Came out really well. I have the front going here, so waiting on some bolts for the pickups, waiting on my tuners, waiting on the graph tech nut blank. A lot of waiting for supplies to come in. I know that you're supposed to have all these supplies ready to go when you're building your guitar, but I never do that. A lot of the times I haven't thought that far ahead and I don't know what I'm gonna use. I'm still debating whether to use hip shots or spurzels. I'm still at that point. I can actually make the nut out of bone, but it would be bone colored, and I don't think that's going to work really well. I think it'll clash a little bit with the actual color scheme so far, so I want a black craft tech nut. And so I had to order that. Who knows when that'll come in. But luckily, we do have a few bits of build that we can show. So I will show the build of the tuner holes. I'll show some close-ups of the neck joint but more importantly, today we're gonna to talk about design. If that's not something you're interested in, you can go ahead and just skip ahead. But today we're gonna to focus specifically on designing the wrong way. It essentially just means that you have someone who has studied their art so well that they become a master at it, and then are able to deviate from those set rules and start to break those rules. So let's go ahead and jump into it and talk a little bit about design and always think in the back of your mind when you're listening to this conversation to view it through the lens of guitar building. All right, let's get to it. Edgar Degas was born in 1834 to a wealthy banking family and was educated in the classics. Later in life, Degas was one of the founders of the Impressionists although he never really liked that label. In the late 1870s, Degas began work on what would become one of his most radical paintings, Jockeys Before the Race. Jockeys is a wonderful painting. Just look at the impressionistic brush strokes, the color palette, the musculature of the horses. But Degas does something to his composition that was completely radical. He paints a pole in the foreground asymmetrically cutting through one of the horse's heads. He does this consciously. He makes a choice to do this. Degas wasn't trying to think outside the box. He wasn't trying to be innovative. He was purposely trying to do something that was displeasing to the eye. Naturally, people made fun of it, but over time, other artists were inspired. They found inspiration to inject life and tension into work that at the time was pedestrian and humdrum. Think of these design choices as a stage in a cycle. A cycle that begins with practitioners dedicating themselves to improving the rules. Over time, those rules become laws, and artists and designers dedicate themselves to excelling within these agreed-upon parameters. But once a certain maturity has been reached, someone comes along who decides to take a different route. Instead of trying to create an ever more polished and perfect artifact, this rebel actively seeks out imperfection sticking a pole in the middle of his painting. Eventually, some of these creative breakthroughs end up becoming the foundation of a new set of aesthetic rules, and the cycle begins again. As soon as you've seen this once, you start to see it almost everywhere. 
a strategy used by trained artists who make the decision to do something deliberately wrong. In 2017, Apple designed the iPhone X, in which a notch cut into the actual display. This was a deliberate design choice, yet everybody made fun of it. Half of all articles written about it suggested that Apple may have made a mistake. How could anyone deliberately design in such a fashion that would obscure a portion of the display? What was Apple doing? Apple was simply sticking a pole in it. Guitar design is an interesting facet of industrial design where we not only have to account for acoustical aspects and ergonomic aspects, but also follow simple lines and curves to make these guitars visually appealing. Guitar design is now stuck in phase one. We have agreed upon a set of rules. We follow these rules as law and Many of the design choices that deviate from those rules really never stick. If we think back to Degas, he absorbed artistic tradition and outside influences and reinterpreted them in innovative ways. That's the takeaway. You need to study hard, study the past, master your craft, excel at it, then one day stick a pole in it. What a bunch of baloney, right? Design theory? In any case, I prefaced this video with that idea of designing the wrong way because of these tuner holes. So what I have up here is a mock-up. This is just a mock-up I quickly fabricated with very whole number dimensions. So. Ideally, what you have going on with tuner holes is a line, and this line is actually parallel to the line of your headstock design. And what you have are equally spaced tuner holes across that line. Now, these tuner holes have to line up with the strings. Well, they don't have to, but they should. So you want to account for the tuner post diameter so that the string wraps around it properly. So quick mock-up here, this is not accurate by any means, I'm just trying to show you or illustrate what my decisioning was when I was designing the tuner holes. So this is all a game of trying to find the appropriate dimensions that fit within your headstock. So in this case, since I already had a headstock design, I am bound to that design. I do not want to change it. I could, but I do not want to. So the problem with this is that we want to have, hopefully, straight string pull. That is something that we're always looking for, and it's a little hard to get unless you are willing to redesign your headstock. I am not. So finding straight string pull in this case means I have to go off the line. It means I can't have this line parallel to the headstock line. It means this point needs to have to shift all the way up in order for this to actually meet with that low E. And the string spacing is important too, because as you modify the angle of this point, then you need to modify the distance between the actual tuner holes. Again, it's all a huge game. So a while back I decided I wanted to make this headstock to be dual purpose, meaning it would be used for headless design as well as tuners. So I was able to find a source for some new old stock Steinberger gearless tuners. And they're really, really pretty. They're pretty in the sense that they're different looking. It's not something you see every day. Although you've seen something slightly like them on some of the Gibson models. That's the Firebird, I think, that uses them. But they use a Gibson style of that gearless tuner. The original Steinberger gearless tuners are way prettier. So the design that I ended up falling on was this one here, where we are no longer following this line it is angled now so it starts off around here and it slowly pushes itself up in order for this tuner hole to have a straight string through pull with that low e 
Now the tuner hole spacing is all equidistant, so they're the equidistant spacing between each hole. They line up perfectly for straight string through pull. So already, visually, this is going to look a little bit jarring, and that's why I prefaced this whole video with the idea of designing the wrong way. This is not the right way to design, yet when I imagine my new old stock Steinbrecher gearless tuners in here, I think they're going to look really cool. So it's certainly not the correct way to design guitar tuners, but I'm taking a chance on it. So let's take a look at some of these holes. It does look a little bit strange. At first, when you see it, you can tell there's some angles and some geometry that just doesn't quite work. But if you stare at it long enough, then something starts to click and it starts to work. And I'm really digging this. Again, I don't know if you've ever seen Steinbrecher gearless tuners, but they're just little round knobs. So imagine a round knob around each of these holes and you actually tune it through the back. So it's a straight knob with a post going to the back and it looks really, really neat. Now I could also use traditional geared tuners and let's take a look at that. So I'm going to experiment with a little bit of everything. I'm, I've ordered my Steinbrecher gearless tuners and I've also ordered these hip shot tuner buttons that are just barrels. They're like industrial design knurled barrels. But this will also work with buttons. So I've, tried, I've tested this with buttons and they work as well. So there is, if you take a look, a slight angle. These barrels are slightly sticking out while these are slightly shorter. But in the end, it's an interesting design. It may not be perfect. It's certainly not correct. It's designing the wrong way. Absolutely. But I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to totally go for this. So let me just spin this around so you can see it. Anyway, this is the whole idea of designing the wrong way. All right, let's get out of here.
So that's all I have for this week. I think next week we'll actually install the tuners. We'll actually build and design the nut, install that. And then we can start focusing on the bridge and the wiring. And that'll all be next week. But for now, thanks for watching and take it easy. Thank you.